Hey there Dev Squad, Ryan here. In this video, we're going to be preparing our project for Steam Multiplayer in Unreal Engine 4. During the video, we'll be installing the multiplayer plugin Advanced Sessions from the Unreal Forums, and we'll be editing our project settings to enable Steam. Before we get started, you'll need to download Visual Studio Community. If you don't have this yet, go ahead and pause the video install it, and then come back. It's free to use, and we'll be using it to edit a few C++ files, plus compile our project. To figure out which version you should download, look at this list and choose the coinciding version to your project version. If you're interested in learning more about C++ syntax, be sure to check out the C++ course on the Virtus Learning Hub. All right, let's go ahead and get started. If you have a project already, you can skip this step. The first thing we're going to do is create a new project. And once your window is opened, just go ahead and navigate to the New Project tab, and then choose one of these. Doesn't matter which, it will work on any of them, but we're going to be using the first person template. Once you've selected your project type, go ahead and go down to the folder, and then change the directory, and then you'll want to rename your project as well. Once that's done, go ahead and click Create Project and wait for the editor to open. Once your editor is opened, go ahead and close out of it because we need to edit some of the settings. So once your editor is closed, go ahead and navigate to the Advanced Sessions plugin on the Unreal Forums. It should be linked in the description. And then scroll down to this list right here and find your engine version. We'll be using 4.22. So just click and download this. When Advanced Sessions has finished downloading, go ahead and open the files. When the files are open, you'll need to either create or find the plugins folder. So double click in here, and then as you can see, I have copied the Advanced Sessions over from this folder into my plugins folder inside of the project directory. After you've moved the Advanced Sessions folder into your plugins folder, the next thing that we need to do is create a blank C++ file. So just choose anywhere here in your content browser, and then we want to create a new C++ class. Leave it at none, go to next, and then you can rename it if you'd like, and then we're just gonna click create class. And what this will do is compile advanced sessions into your project and give you the header files and the target files that we need to enable Steam Multiplayer. Once your project has finished compiling, we're just going to go ahead and X out of this again. Next, we're going to navigate back into our project folder, and then we're going to click on and go into this new source folder. So the files that we want to edit inside of this folder are Steam Multiplayer Editor target.cs and steam multiplayer.target.cs. Now these will be different depending on your project name, but they should be in the same place. Navigate into your project name folder, and the next two files that we want are steam multiplayer.h and the build.cs. And again, these will be different depending on your project name. Once you have the files open, navigate to the build.cs and this is the first place we're going to be making changes. So there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to add to this public dependency module names. And let's go ahead and get started. First thing that we want to add is online subsystem. Then we want to add online subsystem utils. Make sure these are in quotation marks. Next one that we want to add is Steamworks. And the last one is networking. Okay. So after we've done that, right in between these, we are going to add another line. And this line will be dynamically. 
loaded module names dot add online subsystem theme. And then we just want to make sure that there's a semicolon at the end of this, and that should be it. So the last thing that we're going to do in this file is we're going to uncomment this private dependency module names. And you can do that by deleting these two forward slashes. The next file that we need to edit is our header file. We're going to be adding includes to these. These includes we're going to add give definitions of UE4 functionality to your project. If they are not included, any calls to the engine's functions are not understood by Visual Studio. The first two add some core functionality, and the last four add network functionality. So the first two we're going to include are core minimal.h and engine.h. We're just going to do hashtag include core minimal.h. Make sure these are capitalized. If they are capitalized here, it is case sensitive. And then include engine.h. The next four that we're going to do are include, and let's just copy this really quick so we don't have to keep typing that. We'll do include net forward slash unreal network dot h. And then we're going to do unreal network dot h. Second to last is networking dot h. And then we're going to do online dot h. So the next file we're going to be editing is the editor.target.cs. For this file, we just need to add b uses theme equals true semicolon. And then we're going to copy this. And we're going to also put this in the target.cs. that's it for the Visual Studio files. So you can go ahead and close out of this. Click Save. The last place that we need to edit is back inside of our project folder. Go to Project, Config, and then Default Engine.ini. Once you've got this open, find some blank space like I have here, and then we're going to be copying and pasting from the description these lines. So this line sets the net driver to use the Steam subsystem. This line tells the online subsystem to use Steam. This line is the Steam subsystem settings. You want to check connection timeout right here and Steam app ID right here. For now, we'll use the testing ID 480. You should replace this with your Steam ID when you are assigned one from Valve. This line sets the net connection class name to Steam Online Subsystem. To test and see if Steam is now working in your project, you'll need to package your project, which you can do by going to File, Package Project, and then choosing your operating system. Once your project is finished building, you can double click the EXE right here and wait for the game to open. When your game opens, you should be able to press Shift and tab and see the Steam overlay. If you don't see the Steam overlay, try walking back through the steps of the tutorial or checking to make sure that Steam is online. So that's the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to set up the logic for joining, finding, and hosting servers. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating.